How would you like to know what's going on in the sun? You get so close to the sun that you've almost landed on the sun. Well, not quite. But uh, this puppy uh, blasted off yesterday, and in seven years, it's going to be within a little over a million miles uh, of the center of our solar system to try to find out some stuff to former U.S. astronaut Tom Jones. Tom, what is this thing actually going to do? Well, that's the Parker Solar Probe, and its job, Neil, is to get closer than any spacecraft has ever been to the sun and really try to unlock the secret of how the sun's upper atmosphere, the corona, that's the part that you can see during a right. solar eclipse. That thing is over a million or two million degrees hot, and we don't know how the sun surface at 11,000 degrees can heat something above it where it should be getting cooler up to a much higher temperature. And that hot solar corona forms the solar wind which streams by the Earth and actually interacts with our global geomagnetic field. So we get aurora and we get power outages, and we could even get a crippling solar storm from that corona heating mechanism making its, making its way all the way out to Earth. So it's important to understand the physics so we can predict these storms in the future. Now, I know when it gets there, there there's a point at which it's traveling uh, at 420 some odd thousand miles. Uh, yeah, the probe, right? Right, mm -hmm. and w which is like going from, what is it, Tokyo to New York in, in just a couple of seconds. Uh, w w have we ever done anything like this? In terms of spacecraft speed and the technology to resist the intense heat and radiation of the sun, this is a new, uh, a new high for NASA. Yeah. And they put together a spacecraft package that can not only survive the seven year transit time till it gets very close to the sun and does its most important science, but it's also put together technologies that have never been uh, tried out before. So getting this close to the sun is a real challenge to keep the instruments and the communications relays cool while the front side of the heat shield is at, is at 2,500 degrees. That's amazing. You know, Tom, um, while you're here, if you don't mind, uh, the president is pushing the Space Force. Uh, uh, Vice President Pence has elaborated a little bit on it. There are some who worry that this is going to quickly militarize space. Whatever we do, the Chinese will respond, the Russians will respond, and all of a sudden, uh, it's a whole different vista up there. What do you think? Mm. Uh, we do need the capability to protect our space assets and pre to prevent somebody else from surprising us and taking out our very valuable military reconnaissance and communication satellites. So we need the capability. We don't probably need, I think, the extra bureaucracy of a sixth military service. But we do need to reinforce the Air Force Space Command's efforts to protect our assets in space, make them defensible, and then make sure that our opponents know that anything they do in space to us is going to be coming back ten times worse to them. And space is already a military arena. We use it, our adversaries use it, and we have to make sure that we can still access it to, um, to multiply our military power here on the ground. But Tom, to your point, we do have this Space Command already, this Air Force Space Command. Yes. So are we just layering this? Is this going to be answerable? To, to that one? Well, I think what we um, can choose between is reinforcing the current Air Force Space Command, which also uh, draws in expertise from all the other military services at present, or we can choose to create a sixth service, and I think the startup friction, the bureaucracy that's added, you know, all the money that has to go into that will be not where it needs to be, which right. is on protecting our assets, developing new jam-proof satellites, faster, cheaper launch services, and so on. Now, this new team of astronauts that will largely be assigned to this commercial effort, I don't know if it's the original Mercury 7 or the Gemini bunch or the Apollo bunch, but we, it is nice to see the naming of men and women who will be going back up there. Uh, what do you think of that? Yeah, this is an exciting development for me because I've been waiting since 2011, and a lot of other people have too, waiting for the U.S. to regain its ability to launch its own astronauts from the U.S. to the space station and then beyond. And when the shuttle retired in 2011, we turned that all over to our partners of the space station program, the Russians, right. and we've been leasing seats from them ever since. And, you know, with our problems dealing with Russia these days, it's it's wise to get our own domestic capability back up on its feet. The naming of these new nine astronauts, uh, they're, they're colleagues of mine that I worked with back in Houston. There are some new ones, too, that are looking for their first flights. They'll be riding these commercial transports and reestablishing our ability to launch our own people to space. They're, they're not exactly Tom Jones, but they're close. They're very close. <laughs> well, they learned from me, so they <laughs> picked up a lot of wisdom along the way. I hear you. Uh, that's enviable wisdom. Tom, thank you very much. Uh, Tom Jones. Uh, former U.S. astronaut. Uh, uh, and again, it is nice to see you as far as uh, space. We're back. Uh, we're, we're looking to go to the sun. I'm going to try this joke again. We're, uh, we're going at night. We're, we're going at night. Nothing. Okay, fine. A little more to this.